On today's episode of The Young and the Restless, Jack makes Adam a surprising offer and Chance serves notice on Victor. Nick receives advice from Sharon, Nikki uncovers the truth, and Billy questions Jack's wisdom. Nikki informs Victoria at Newman Enterprises that she has talked to her father about the night Ashlyn was killed, but that she is convinced there is more to the story than she is being told. Nikki notices Victoria's reaction and knows that they share a secret. She's pretty sure she has the answer already. On the night of Ashlyn's death, Nick decided Victoria deserved to know what transpired, so he filled her in at Crimson Lights. Sharon probes for any pre-existing doubts regarding the truth of the situation. She hasn't been obsessing over it like he has, so in Nick's opinion, that's not the case. Sharon agrees that it must have been surprising, and the two of them discuss the parallels to JT experience. Nick says they need to look out for Victor from now on unless he comes clean. Chance tells Victor at the ranch that he thinks someone removed Ashlyn's body to keep Nick and Victoria safe. An interesting theory, Victor mused. Chloe mentioned Kevin to Sally at Newman Media as the source of an idea. When he finished the film, he went downstairs to play a video game based on it, like one should. As Chloe rambles on, Sally daydreams about Adam, but she comes back to the conversation when Chloe recommends they use their collection of graphic books to inspire ideas for screenplays and game designs. Sally agrees, but she can't help thinking about Adam. While Chloe keeps continuing, Sally daydreams about having sex with her ex. As time goes by, Sally comes to and tells Chloe that she is interested in hearing more. As Adam looks around society, he sees Jack sitting at a table and decides to join him. Adam thinks it was inevitable that he and Newman will eventually part ways, and Jack has already heard the news. Jack expresses his condolences and inquires about his future plans. Adam simply hasn't given it any consideration. According to Jack, he must do so since harboring resentment serves no useful purpose. Adam invites him to join him for lunch and admits that, yes, he is hurt by his father's rejection again. He hoped things would be different this time. Jack speculates that it may have been thanks to Sally's encouragement. Chloe sympathizes with Sally's plight in Chelsea and shares her desire to rid Newman Media of the negative energy Adam has left behind. She begs her not to let his memory rob her of this chance. Sally has certain apprehensions. What if I can't do this without him? Chloe encourages her and tells her she can do it. Throw away your irrational fears and get to work. Clearly, Sally confirms that. Okay, thanks. Nick tells Sharon at Crimson Lights that he agrees with Chance's speculation that Victor removed Ashlyn's body from Victoria's home, but that he has no proof to back up this claim. It's not the first time, Sharon thinks, that he's had to make the call on whether or not to cover for his dad. Chance comes up in conversation, and Sharon makes a comparison to Ray. He has to risk his wife's family's safety in order to solve this case. Incredulous. What is he expected to do with that? Nick claims that Chance will keep investigating and Victor will keep denying, but that eventually one of them will cave. He begins to second-guess himself for bringing Chance into it, but Sharon quickly sets him straight. The call concerning JT was something she wished they'd done. Nick is in a terrible state now. In Sharon's opinion, his emotions stem more from his attempting to come to terms with what he's done. While at the ranch, Victor questions whether or not Chance has data to back up his hypothesis. Chance has looked for anything that would confirm Ashlyn left the building, but he has come up empty-handed. Rather of continuing to speculate, Victor advises he quit. From what Chance has heard, the investigation has led them to surveillance footage of the vehicle, which suggests there were more than one occupants. One of the investigators even discovered a cigarette butt. Victor laughs it off, saying it could be anyone's. Exactly why is he squandering his time doing this? To get Chance to drop the case, Victor puts forth extra effort. Chance keeps a keen eye on him. Chance assures his father-in-law that he would investigate the situation thoroughly. When compared to other possible uses of one's time, Victor believes this one is not worth pursuing. Chance isn't confident that Locke would agree. Victor yells that nobody gives a crap about what he believes and that the jerk who crashed into the ravine was a jerk again. Chance argues that the evidence doesn't support this, 
and that he can't ignore the fact that he hid a tragic accident in the past. What happened to Adam, Victor says, was a long time ago. Chance is relentless and refuses to give up. It makes no difference to Victor. There's nothing else I can add. As Nikki and Victoria discuss the events that transpired at Newman, Nikki asks Victoria. So, Victor's guys removed Ashlyn's body, put it in his car, and crashed into the ravine. The answer from Victoria is yes. Nikki says she has no doubt that her husband was involved because of what he did for Adam when he was a kid. According to Victoria's report, Chance thinks the body was moved but has no proof. They gave the impression of indignation, but if the truth were to emerge, it would severely compromise their credibility. Concerned, Nikki tries to leave the house immediately. She left Chance at the ranch, and he's probably questioning Victor right now. They need to get her back to the house. Adam's peers at society assume he keeps returning to Newman because he has a twisted sense of restitution for his childhood misdeeds. Jack ponders, perhaps you aren't seeking pardon so much as you are seeking forgiveness. Sally is on the phone at Newman Media selling Chloe's proposal and making a deal with the other party. She ends the call and assures Chloe they will be successful business partners. They will have significant sway and authority. Now that's the Sally Spectra, I know. Chloe exclaims with a snap of appreciation. The two reconcile at Crimson Lights, where Nick admits to Sharon that she was right and that he is angry with himself for giving in to Ashland. Their attempt at a cover-up with JT, as Sharon recounts, backfired spectacularly. She truly hopes that this won't be a repeat performance. Chance tells Victor at the ranch that if he continues to be stubborn, the consequences will fall squarely on his shoulders. It's not like Victor needs to make amends for anything. Chance acknowledges their familial ties but refuses to back down. Victor is under no illusions that he will. It's family time, he informs his son-in-law, so he should get back to his wife and kid. Now that no one considers Ashlyn Locke a threat, he can rest easy. In his time at society, Jack recalls that Victor was an adversary but he eventually realized that he was better off focusing his negative emotions elsewhere. Even Adam has the potential to start over. Let it go and be Adam Newman, maybe. So many doors are open to you where you can show the world what you're made of. Actually, I can consider one example immediately. Join me at Jambot, please. Sharon advises Nick to forget about Ashlyn for a little while they are in the coffee shop, to which he is invited to join her, Noel, and Ally for supper. Since he returned home, he's been more animated than she's ever seen him. Nick believes Ally is wonderful and hopes to see him in a healthy relationship. Jack makes his presentation to Adam at Society, who acknowledges he is skeptical of family businesses. Jack reveals that Kyle has left Newman to leave Marchetti, and adds that Summer has taken a job there to avoid the turbulence at Newman. Adam is concerned about Kyle and Summer's reaction if he were to accept a job offer from the company. They just hired Diane Jenkins, the least popular person in Genoa City, Jack exclaims. Your fame would be nothing compared to his. Jack is warming up to the idea more and more as he gives it some thought. He requires assistance from another person in order to successfully navigate the waters ahead. Adam says he'll give it careful consideration because the offer means a lot to him. They are shaking hands when Billy walks in and accuses Jack of making a deal with the devil. Given how much Adam enjoys hearing his own voice on record, it's a wonder he can ever pull himself away from the studio. Billy makes fun of Adam for being unemployed. Adam says goodbye to Jack after promising to get in touch shortly. The question immediately arises for Billy. What the hell was that all about? Sally of Newman Meteor reveals to Chloe that she is reconsidering the company's strategy towards the Ashlyn Law case. Because of her probation status, Chloe points out that she can't mess with the Newmans. Sally denies this and argues that she isn't. When Chloe told her that Nick had punched Ashlyn before he passed away, that changed forever. She called Nick and shared the information with him. When we get that piece of information, I don't think they'll let us go. Chloe fears she may have upset the Newmans with her threats. Not only did Sally not do that, but her expertise also means she has a solid career ahead of her. 
Chloe raises doubts about her desire to keep digging. Sally thinks they should get ready for the inevitable and write a sympathetic piece about what happened, just in case someone figures it out. Chloe is invited to question Kevin about the investigation, she says. Chloe is not enthusiastic. Sally is astonished to hear that the two were formerly engaged and inquires about her familiarity with Chance. To Chloe's knowledge, he is a straight shooter who would never leak material to the press. Therefore, she doubts that he would tell her anything. Sally is confident that they will find a solution, as she is convinced that there is another way. When Chance and Victoria meet up again at Newman, Victoria immediately questions how his conversation with her dad went. Victoria says to herself that it sounds like Chance is assuming guilt when he claims to have taken the fifth. Unless he expects them to give in, she doesn't see the sense in running around making these charges without proof. When asked, Chance laughs and says, You? Never. Nikki tells Victor at the ranch that Victoria informed her that Victor had his team transport Ashlyn's body. It was not something Victor wanted to involve them with. When will he realize that Nikki has his back, even though she knows he'll do everything to protect his kids? Victor now understands that he should have been honest with her from the beginning. She then follows up with, So, what did Chance want to talk about? Jack informs Billy, I offered Adam a position at Jabot, at Society. So Billy says, I'm sorry, what? Even though he has feelings for Adam, he should see that Adam is trying to get under Victoria's skin. Jack does not believe that Newman is a healthy environment for him. In Billy's opinion, he is not trustworthy. Jack explains to his sibling that he and his sibling have different perspectives. To the exclusion of all else, Billy pinned an article about a monster. I did. And yet, I was able to see past the anger and hatred to the person inside. You should probably give it another look for yourself. After her husband's loss of control that night, Victoria tells Chance about it at Newman. The situation would have been far worse for her if Nick hadn't shown up. The hassle of looking into it is not justified. Chance says that is not how it works. He does not decide in advance who is worthy of his investigation. He is dedicating his work to his partner, Ray, and has promised to always meet her exacting standards. For Victoria, this is the highest possible praise. Chance gives Victoria the dire warning that her daily decisions shape their reality. Until someone like Ashlyn comes along and drains you of any belief in truth and honesty, says Victoria in a return shot. Victor says at the ranch that Chance didn't like his replies. Nikki understands now that this is due to the fact that they were not adequate responses. As in, I've been there. She gets that he didn't want her to get involved, but they're better off as a unit. Victor cautions that this is a moment when family unity is crucial. Even though Sharon invited Nick to join her, Noel, and Allie for dinner at Crimson Lights, Nick turned down the offer. She tells him to always have in mind that Victor decided to act in that way. You are completely off the hook. Adam approaches the coffee shop from the outside and tries to enter, but the door is closed. Outside, he observes Nick and Sharon deep in conversation, inside and expresses deep consideration. 